All right, I just finished this build. Just rode this for two or three miles. This is a Gary Turner BMX, Craig Turner Bandolero 2.0. This is a 26 inch. They only made uh, two of these so far. I don't know if they're gonna make any more. They made uh, a bunch in the 29 inch version, but they've only made two in the 26 inch. Those are Craig Turner bars. The frame and the fork had the same decarb stuff on it, and I sanded most of it off. But on the bars, I wanted a little bit of contrast, so I just left it on there. I put a clear coat over it. <clears throat> All right, so I'll talk about the components. There's some cars going by, so if I pause for just a minute, that's why. Uh, I'll just uh, start up front, I guess. We got the Craig Turner bars, um, some S&M hoder grips, box three brake lever, and box three rear brake. We got the profile stem. It's the push stem, 53 millimeter. Profile cranks and sprocket. That sprocket is a Galaxy 30 tooth. It's a 22 millimeter spline sprocket and these column cranks are 22 millimeter splined cranks. There is no bolt on these for the sprocket, so you have to use a spline sprocket. There's no bolt on either crank arm. The spindle is hollow. These are Odyssey Dugan Grandstand 2 pedals. I've also got an Odyssey linear SLS brake cable along with an Odyssey one inch seat post. It's a 25.4, I think. The seat post clamp is JW, made in the USA, JW Bicycle Products, JW BMX. That's a 28.6, which fits a one inch tube. I also have a JW rear cog. That's a 13 tooth JW cog, which you can't see. And JW chain tensioners. The wheels are custom Sun XL with GT Superlace hubs, the newer ones, the 2019 version. These are G-Sport bolts. Those aren't the bolts that came with the hub, and that's not the cog that came with the hub. And those spacers also did not come with the hub. Those, you can barely see them, but there's a couple black spacers in there. Um, S&M Speedball tires, 26 inch. S&M grips I showed you. Okay, the stem cap. <clears throat> that's one of the Gary Turner logos. And that's a custom stem, stem cap. It's a fork preload bolt, stem cap, whatever you want to call it. I got this off of a Facebook group, the 24, 26, 29 group. And I got this head tube badge off of the same group. The badge 
Uh, so this this frame set did come with a, a sticker set. It has a down tube sticker, a seat, a couple seat tube stickers, like a chromoly and a GT sticker made in the USA. And it has a head tube sticker. But the head, the head tube sticker I thought was a little bit too big. And this was only 20 bucks and it was just so much nicer. So the guy who had these made for the first Bandoleros, the first Bandoleros didn't have the double top tube like this one. Just had a single top tube. But he had a bunch of these made and I guess he still had some left over because he sold me one. Uh, Chris King no thread set headset and it is uh, one and one eighth. So this is obviously a non-integrated head, head tube. There's no bearing cups in there so that's why you have to you have to have the press in cups. The 26 inch fork came with the frame it was a frame set. So it was just the frame and the fork. I bought these handlebars later. I'll turn the bike around in just a minute. Show you the other side. Okay. So some of you are probably wondering about this stain. If you haven't been following my channel, um, these, these, this black stuff. So when I sanded off the decarb, you can see the decarb where it ended right there. When I sanded it off, I tried this metal stain. It's like a non-reactive metal patina for steel. And it just didn't stick. It just pretty much wiped right off. So I just kind of buffed it off. I left some around, you know, I just left a little bit of it on there. Honestly, I just buffed it as hard as I could with just a magic eraser. And um, the stuff you see on here, this stuff here, is just leftover that didn't come off. And then I clear coated the whole whole bike with just an acrylic. Just an acrylic uh, rattle can matte clear coat. I did the frame, the forks, and the bars. Okay, we talked about the grips, the brake, brake cable, stem, stem cap, headset. I had to cut the fork steer tube. I had to cut about three quarters of an inch off. You can see the top of it in there. Brake cable, seat post, clamp. Okay, the seat is Brooks C17, carved. Carved is, the, is are the ones with this notch in it. I got another brick seat, a C17 without the carve, and it's on a bike that I ride a lot. So I'm gonna ride this for, I don't know, at least four months, and then I'm gonna do like a comparison video between the carved and the not carved one. We'll see how it, how it all pans out. Um, this thing right here is an Originate Super Noodle. It just allows you to run the outer, the brake cable, the outer cable, the outer housing all the way to the end. Talked about the brake, the sprocket, the pedals. The chain is just an Odyssey Bluebird chain. Talked about the tensioners, the hub bolts, the cog, the tires. I think that's it as far as parts go.
Now I'm gonna do a little update of where I am in this build. Before I clean up this fork, I wanted to show you, I cut this steer tube. I cut this much off and all I used was this um, pipe cutting tool. It just clamps on and then you slide the blade right here in the middle. So I got these wheels put together with the tires. I have the tire liners in there and the tubes. Those are only filled up to about 10 PSI. <clears throat> so those are ready to go. I got the bottom bracket in. It's an American bottom bracket with mid bearings. I got the seat clamp on, JW. I put some grease on there, you can see down in there. Put a lot of grease in there. I got the headset on, King headset. It's rolling very smooth. And um, this head two badge I got off a Facebook group. I had put that on already. So I put the fork in, I put the stem on, and I measured where I needed to cut the fork. That's why you saw that, um, I showed you that cut over there. So yeah, that's actually it for today. I'm gonna file, file that steer tube so it's nice and smooth and not sharp. I'm gonna put it back on here and make sure that I cut it the right size. I'm sure it is. And that's it for today. Tomorrow should be easier than today. All right, quick update on the bike build. Got the stem on, bars and grips, wheels, headsets looking good. Spins real nice, no problems. I have the brakes mounted, uh, but I'm not going to do any uh, fine tuning until after the chain is on because this position might change. But I have those on. I put the, um, the boss mounts on. They have Loctite. And then on the outside of the mounts, I put grease on. And um, these are moving nice and free. I also switched these washers around. They come stock with the big ones on the inside and the little ones on the outside. I switched them around so that when they're in this position, they're not so far out. It just makes it look a little nicer. Uh, most people agree with that. And now I'm starting on the cranks and I wanted to show you guys a quick tip. So yeah, I'm happy with it. It's totally solid. It spins really well, and, which I'll show you after I get this chain on. But I wanted to do this video. Um, I think I've showed you this in a different video or showed my viewers this in a different video, but when you're gonna size a chain and you, when you break the chain, break the pin going outward towards the side you're working on. It's a lot easier to get your chain breaker in on this side to push the pin this way. Now when I put this chain together, it's gonna to be a lot easier to push this pin back in this way. So yeah, I'm almost done with the hard part. This is an Odyssey Bluebird chain. Got the cranks arm, that was by far the hardest. That took me around an hour, maybe even a little more. And um, if it wasn't for this homemade spacer I made that I showed you, this one right here, I don't know if I would have ever gotten these things on. I, I mean, I would have had to have just pounded on them with a mallet and hopefully they would have slid on. But um, yeah. All right, I'm done with the brakes. My biggest tip on brakes is to just Keep squeezing the handle really, really hard, the lever really, really hard. It stretches the cable out. 
And then once you get it pretty good, you want to start messing with these fine adjustment screws on both sides until this arm moves. Because every single time I put V-brakes on, this arm never moves at first. So you leave a little bit of slack in the line and the arms move opposite of the direction you turn the screw. So if you turn the screw inward clockwise going in, the arms are going to move out. So if you want this arm to start moving and it's kind of stuck and this arm's a little bit further away, so you want it to move in that way, so you're going to do this counterclockwise and that's what I had to do to adjust these. It might look like it's rubbing but it's not. It's perfect. All right, so I need to adjust the seat. It's going to go down a little bit lower. I like it to be about right here with the handlebars. So it's almost where it needs to be. I think it needs to go down about an inch, but I'm going to ride it first. Yeah, I got the front wheel on. Got my Odyssey linear SLS cable, a box lever, s &M grips. I need to put those irons in, which I have right here. Let's see if I can do this while I'm filming. Put the shield facing upward. Nice. I'll do the other side. I've got the other one right here. I just push in. These things are like $3, so I know the fancy ones are real nice, um, but some of them are the ones with the screw, but some of them are super hard to get out once you get them in there. I prefer these because they're going to get banged up. I always throw my bike in the back of my truck pickup, in the bed of my pickup, and um, these get banged up, so... But yeah, that's it. I'll do a walk around out in the sunlight in a little bit. But everything seems to be good. I gotta air these tires up.